All right. So for the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'd like to show you the new feature that has been introduced in SharePoint Framework version 115, which gives you the ability to customize list forms. Right? So when you think about a list, right, you have three forms in there. You have a form to create new item in a list, to view an item that is already in a list, and to edit an item. Right? And with the uh, SharePoint Framework 115, we got the ability to override these forms. So you can create your own experiences on top of that, maybe even to the point where you, know, you want to build a simple app experience that is by the data from a list. So let's walk through it, how that works step by step. Now, the first things prerequisite is you have to have an installed node. And for SharePoint Framework 115, you need to have at least installed node version 14.17.x. Right, so that is something what you see here on my screen. Then the next ingredient, the key ingredient, is Microsoft Generator SharePoint version at least 115.0. I have installed now here on the screen 115.2, which is the latest version available as of now. And then for the rest of the toolchain, Gulp CLI, not Gulp, Gulp CLI, which will then use Gulp install that is inside the project and yo, so that we can run, uh, so, so that we can create the project. So let's do that. Let's create a new SharePoint framework project with a form extension, but with one thing, to avoid that we wait too long and you all watch uh, me install NPM packages, let's skip that part because for the first part, it is not important, right? So let's create a project that will allow us to create that customizer of a form uh, of a list. Three, two, one. Yo needs to wake up. I think it's the first time that I create a project today, so maybe it still needs to wake up and get the right dependencies from the disk. Also, you're looking at it, so it's also slow because of that. Uh, and it's also hot, so maybe like all these th three add to that, that it takes a while. So every single time as you create a new project with SPFX, you need to enter the name. And here you need to pick up a type of component that you want to add. You don't see a form customizer here because it is an extension. So it's one of the types of extensions that you can build with SPFX. So here we go into extension. And from here, from the different types of extensions that we have available, we go all the way down and pick a form customizer. So that form allows us, or that type of extension, allows us to customize the form experience of a list. We use the default name, we'll not do anything with that. And to keep things simple and accessible to everybody, let's not use React yet, right? Three to one, pro 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 project is done. So let's see what we have in place. When, when we go to source and extension, so this is the project that we got from the generator SharePoint, right? And in here we can see the hello world form customizer that we have just created. What is in there? Let me move that aside. It is just an extension. So like any other extension in SPFX, it has properties which you can pass to basically uh, make it configurable across instances so that you can reuse it across different size use cases and so forth and so on. Next, you have the same on init method that you have in web parts and extension. You have the render because there's a UI part to it. You want to build a form customizer that has a UI to it. So you need to have a render so that you can render on the page the HTML that you want to show. This part is exactly the same. And then we arrive at two form customizer specific methods that we have and which you must, you must, you must use. So when you save an item, imagine that you build a new form or an added form and you change the item. You need to call this form save method because that then notifies SPFX and the runtime of a page that that form was saved. The item was saved, the form was saved, and it will then handle that behavior probably on the page. The same thing goes for a close because if you view an item or, or edit an item or create an item and you cancel, there is also a behavior attached to it. This is exactly why you need to ensure that whatever code you add on this page in this component, you also need to call these two methods that are tied into SPFX runtime, right? So this is a key, key, key part. All right, so this is, this is a very bare bones thing. Like there is really not much specific to it. And one more thing that we get, if you go to config and serve, 
we get a different on the figs to run or to serve this component in debug mode, right? Because like it's a form of a list. And as I said, there are three behaviors that you can implement, right? So you can implement a new form, view form, or an edit form. And to make it really easy for you to debug them, we get from SPFX the configs for new form, added form, and view form with exactly the right components ID and page type parameters, IDs, and so forth and so on. So that the only thing left for you is to run gulp serve with one of these, and then you will be able to preview that instantly in your site on your list without having to manually build that by yourself, right? Another thing important for you to keep in mind is that, well, a list has three behaviors. It has the new, edit, and view. And you can choose to override either all three of them or one or two. So that is up to you, one. Another thing is you can choose whether you want to implement all three views, the new, edit, and view within one component in SPFX, or maybe you want to build three separate because they are so different or you want to separate things and so forth and so on. So you have that ability to choose between whether you want to put everything into one or you wanna have three components that are separate and, and each one serves only one view. And the way it works, like, like we will go eventually into the detail, like how do you associate that on runtime, right? But that's important thing for you to keep in mind. All right, so these are the basics. This is what you get when you create new form customizer with SPFX 115. The next step is let's see one in action. What do these things actually do? So here I have built a really simple form, right? And here you see the very, the very, the most basics view form. It shows a field and the value of a field for an item. So this is my view form. Now let's go to another form, right? So we will change the page type to six. And here, if we go back to config serve, we can see that page type six corresponds to an edit form. So we will be able to edit an item. All right, I've changed it to six three, two, one, and now we have uh, a title field with an input box. So in here, we can add the value and cancel or save the item, and that will actually change the item in the list attached to it, right? And then finally, we also have the eight, which is the new form, right? So in here, we don't edit an item, which is why the input box is empty, because we're creating new item. And again, save, cancel to either create the item or abort it. Right, so how is this implemented? You've seen already, right, that we get the basics extension with the basics in there, right? Let me close that for you and move this aside just to give you a little bit overview of here, right? So in this case, I chose to implement the, all the different states, so the new view and edit into one form stone, 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 stomize, right? And that is exactly why I need to handle all of them, right? So what do we do first? Well. On init, we need to check which display mode are we in. And that is exposed to us by the basic form customizer, right? So in this case, if the form display mode is new, well, we don't need to do anything because there is nothing for us to load in this case, at least, right? There is nothing for us to load because we're creating a new item. But you, you can imagine that if you have, imagine that you, are, you, you want to create new order from, and that is related to a customer in CRM or something, right? In that case, you would here still need to load the data that you want to associate it with. There's just no item data to load for you because you're creating a new item in the list, right? So for a new form in this case, we don't do anything, we return early. Now, if we have anything else, so either view or edit, we need to load the item that we want to work with, right? So in this case, we use the SPHTTP client so that we have authenticated call and then we use REST, in this case, to get our list, get by title, the context list, right? So basically the list on which we currently work, and then also item. So these properties are exposed to us directly in the context, right? So there is nothing for us, like we don't need to parse URLs or do anything else. We can just grab the data directly from, from there and get the item, right? And then also an additional thing, if you want to edit an item, you also need to get the E tag. So e tag allows you to ensure integrity of the item that basically in our words, that nobody else has changed that and you will not override their changes, right? 
So that is exactly the thing you have to have. And then you need to store that something in the class, right? So we have the E tag that we store, and then we store the item, right? Which we get from the response and E tag we get from the headers. And then the last thing left is the rendering, right? So as you've seen, depending on the different views, like in the display mode, we don't show input box because there is nothing to edit. So we, we only want to show things. So in this case, we have a basic uh, div with a label and basically the value of the field. And the only option that we have for interaction is to close the form, to which we then also uh, associate event, right? So, so that on click, that thing will do something. And that is on our close. If we look at that, right? You will see that that will then close internally the form close, the, the behavior that is again ties, tied to the runtime in SPFX. In another case, right? So if we have new added form, in this case, we make it very simple in a way that, well, we always show the input box. And the only difference is whether we fill the title or we put in there an empty string, right? So that is the only difference for the rendering. Again, that will depend very much on your case, and it can get very elaborate depending on what you want to build, right? And the same case, we also associate behavior to our save and close events that for which we will have two buttons on the page. And then beyond that, we call REST to either create new item or update the item that we currently have. And that will then end up to this behavior that you've seen with the new added and view forms. Um, important part, right? So imagine you've built that. How do you deploy that to production? Well, the way it works is that you associate form customizer with a content type, right? And in every list, you have at least two. You have, you have the item one and folder, right? So you would basically using, and you can do that through CSOM, REST, PowerShell. You will be able to do that with CLI too, right? You need to get a reference to content type. And on content type, you have a pair of properties for each type of forms, right? So you have display form client site component ID, which is a very long name, but extremely clear what it wants. It wants the ID of the component that you use to render display form of the content type, right? And that basically will match from the manifest to this GUID here. So it needs to be this. And then another one you have that belongs to this pair are properties that you want to pass. As I said, you can, you can build it in a way that you set things up and it can, you, you can set it up with column names, with locale, with anything you can imagine that's relevant to your code, right? So that is one pair. Well, you have then the same pair with content type for edit form, client side component ID, thank you, copilot. And then you will have component properties. There you go. I don't need to type anything. Then you will have also new form, right? Component ID and new form client side component properties. There you go, right? So with these six properties that belong to content type object, right? Or the old SP content type, you can deploy the code. You can associate it to a content type. And you can either choose to associate it to a content type that is already on the list you can associate it on a content type that is on the site and that will be an applied to every single instance of the content type in every single list in the site or you could even put it in the content type hub in which case it will apply to all instances of this content type across all sites in your tenant right so these are kind of the options you have and then last thing left is like what are the different things you could imagine to build with this right like this is a very simple case basically to go through the mechanics, but you could, for example, build something like here, right? So in here, I have a list that is meant to let users approve or, or review the request for a trip, right? And in here, you, you, you can imagine that, well, you might want to be able to see from where to where you traveled and so forth and so on, and you only want to have two options, accept or not, right? So this is a very simple type of ad that you could build on top of a list that gives you a specific behavior and UX relevant to this case, but doesn't require really a fully fledged app on Azure with storage and so forth and so on, right? So these are kind of the options you have. Here, I will pass it back to Vesa. And if there's anything anybody wants to ask, we can go through that or we can close up. 
So a few things, just to recap on things, uh, because uh, just making sure that um, you can understand that we, we are explaining this in the right way. You were doing a really awesome job there. The, the properties is currently the way of deploying uh, these in the production. So as said, uh, you will need to run some code or the code could be running uh, as part of a web part or it could be running as an external thing which is associating those properties. They are actually also in a feature framework. So technically you could have a list provisioning as part of the solution getting installed on a site level which have all of these properties in place uh, and associated to the right uh, component type. Um, nowadays though we see more and more solutions and SharePoint framework solutions to be deployed in town scope rather than in a site scope and that means that that's not an option necessarily. Now we do have a lot of engineering people actually in this call so um, if people have good ideas on how we can improve this and suggestions and uh, those are more than welcome uh, because that's super super valuable for us to understand how can we make this easier for you on these things. Um, comment on Jim, which is less and less of the feature framework. That is absolutely the intention. Now we do have the option of using the classic feature framework as part of the provisioning of assets in the SharePoint framework solutions because it does exist in the SharePoint. Now, is it something what you should be using? Not necessarily. Um, you can choose to use that, but uh, it's, it's not necessarily always the best option. Now, we are also looking into, uh, for example, if can you go back on the on the wallet? Can you go to a list, um, an example list, just any list uh, in here? So right now, as you saw from uh, Wildex demo, as you are creating a new item, or if this association does exist, we are always redirected away from the context of the list. And the interesting discussion point, uh, Alex just put the link on the on the chat as well. This is almost like scripted. Thank you, Alex. Is that uh, is this good enough? Would you like to have? I can't hear Wes anybody else. No. Nope. Yeah, he, uh, he, yeah, he mentioned he was having internet trouble earlier. So uh, yeah. So, so I believe he, what what he, he was saying. <laughs> First of all, and that's the same question I see in the in the chat. So uh, yes, right now we are redirecting you to the uh, separate page. If you can see, it's layout 15 as PDS form dot SPX page. And uh, yes, we are considering on uh, providing the same functionality in the panel. So how you have the out of the box forms. So when you click on the item or new, you just see the panel opened and uh, uh, you can modify or create your item right from there. So we are looking into this scenario. It's a uh, top priority. We understand that it's needed and we are working to enable it for third party devs too. I believe that's what he wanted to say. <laughs> awesome.